Hi everyone. So I just wanted to go ahead and talk about my um, part two, my abortion experience, and finish this out with you. And then if you have any questions, please just feel free to ask. I know I had a, a really good question or, or a comment by another young lady, and um, it was good to hear, you know, someone else that um, maybe didn't have the exact same experience, experience but just had a concern. Um, so feel free to do so um, below, and um, I will definitely do everything I can to make sure I get back with you. So I just wanted to share that, you know, once the uh, abortion, once I was picked up and the abortion was, you know, completed, I um, you know, I was just a kid, so, you know, I was 13 years old, had no clue, um, and so my, um, abuser picked me up, and he took me to his apartment because, you know, I couldn't really go home because I couldn't go to school, so I came up with an elaborate, um, idea I think it involved ROTC and telling my mom we were heading on a trip or something like this. And um, so, you know, I did the whole forge the note thing and, and all of that stuff. And um, so I was at his apartment and he had a job. And so I'm at the apartment all day long, um, pretty much by myself and um, just sleeping. Couldn't really get out of bed, you know, couldn't really walk. Um, for a little bit and just I think it was probably worse than I was making it out to be because I was so young and I didn't understand so I was fearful just to, to move around so to speak if that makes sense and um, you know just I'm not sure what happened to the inside of my body so I just um, you know thinking back I, I probably could have moved around a little bit and not have to have stayed in that confined little apartment. Um, but there were so many things that were going on then. And one of the most um, vivid memories that I have um, that was, you know, just trauma on top of trauma. Um, I remember one day I woke up and it was getting dark. It was just about dark. And there wasn't a lot of furniture in this apartment. It was a guy's apartment. And it was someplace that he didn't go often because he spent time with his girlfriend, um, his real girlfriend that was his age and not a minor. So I guess this was a side thing or whatnot. But either way, there, it, was, it was very dark and, you know, no pictures on the wall, nothing you know, like that. Just a little basic cotton, probably ugly couch, and a really frilly dining room table, okay? But anyways, this day, I woke up, and it was getting dark, and I just remember feeling the most lonely I have ever felt in my entire life. Not only the most lonely, but it was some type of something came over me to where I felt like I was always going to be alone from that point on, and he wasn't going to come back. So I kind of had some type of maybe experience and during this experience that kind of really caused me to be a little paranoid. And I remember going in the corner and just bawling up and just crying and it began to get dark really fast. And I remember it getting dark and really not wanting to opening my eye to open my eyes and move. And I just stayed there in the corner of the living room. Um, and was crying my eyes out, like, you know, with my knees up, you know, like with my knees up and my head in my hands and not wanting to even look and see the darkness, not go look and turn the light on, nothing. Um, and I just remember feeling debilitated. like It was awful. And hours later, he came home and, and you know, um, he comforted me some and, um, you know, then we just went to sleep or, you know, did whatever 
that he wanted to do and then he went to sleep. But I would just say that, you know, there's so much more that goes on after an abortion, you know, for an organization to claim to, um, you know, we give the information to all the females that are coming here and we make sure that they understand what the procedure is and we show them a videotape and we give them reading material. And, you know, I am, I have been in business long enough now, over 25 years, and I don't have fully grown, educated adults that read all the contracts that I give them. They don't. People don't even read the rental agreement of a sofa that's given to them. That's probably two pages long or three pages long, let alone a, you know, child or a young person, whether it's a minor or not, a young person fully understanding what an abortion is. And it's just, it, it really is disturbing to know that this is happening. There could be some type of protocol or process that, you know, helps just brings an extra person in that is going to be like almost like a one-on-one -on -one mentor to this young lady um, or, um, you know, middle-aged lady or whatever that can comfort them and share and show them that um, empathy, number one. Number two, share what the experiences of others have entailed in different scenarios after the fact. Um you know, um, not only letting them know about adoption and, and there's another way and, and this type of a thing and having the people go through maybe some therapy, not to talk them out of it, just to give them the information that they need because this is a life-changing um, procedure. It's not like getting plastic surgery. It's not like, you know, anything else that us women who can create another being will ever do. It's just not. So this needs to have some special attention and some special care and some extra information and some extra steps so that us as ladies, the ones who create and have the um, ability to create another being, that we be, you know, these legit companies and organizations that are helping these ladies through this decision that they have made, that they go the extra mile to inform, you know, and I haven't researched enough into the industry to know um, the ins and outs and the behind the scenes is how the organizations get paid or um, receive any additional benefit from the abortions that are done. I don't know if after they're done, do they keep a certain portion of what is left over so that they can sell it off. I've heard of things that have, that are happening like that where, you know, the cells or, or whatever are, are being um, sold off. But there are babies and pregnancies that are happening that the babies are formed, you know. And so there's so many different, unfortunately, there's greed. And as there's greed and there's ego, there's so many different things that can happen after these abortions happen with these um, clinics and these doctors and the temptation of, you know, earning really ridiculous amounts of money to, to maybe do this under the rug or, 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 or do this under the rug and get 10,000 or 20,000, whatever extra dollars or getting another organization to know, that this is what you do. So you receive some type of other benefit, maybe not monetarily, but either way, um, there's just, there's so much more care that needs to go into when we're making, when I say we, I mean us ladies who are the only ones that can carry and create and bring out another human being. We need to have more information we need to have more care. We need to have more time so that we can fully take our time, know everything that there is to know, and are heard because a lot of times this is a vulnerable situation. It could be this, it could be that, 
But if we are heard and we if we have someone who is showing us empathy and and wanting to really understand like without judgment, without trying to persuade you not to, but wanting to understand that, you know, okay, we hear we hear exactly what you're saying and we hear what you want to do. We just want to go ahead and, and share this information with you or or share this experience with you or or share the things that are going to happen and what to expect after the um, the procedure, you know. Um, so I think we all need to do a better job with that. And I am, for one, going to continue to pursue the organization so that we can somehow see if that if those steps can be taken and a mentorship or just extra care. And again, I am not um, trying to go ahead and say like as we ladies that are able to create like you have to create um i don't want to harm a baby ever either um but at the same time there's a very fine line there's a lot involved and there's no one answer that fits every situation so there's no one law that can actually satisfy all the multiple different levels and scenarios that this procedure and this decision and this situation and this person's life can cover. There's just no way. And to make pretend that there is, is just silly and it's, it's irresponsible and it's immature. So I hope that, um, I was just wanted to kind of share some ideas on, on how we can be there for one another and not, uh, label one another or not close each other off or box each other in or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, that doesn't do anything except put somebody's elbows up and make them want to do whatever it is that they want to do even stronger and even more without the, without being, um, with being closed and it puts up walls. So it's, it closes you even more. So that's not the key to anything. The key to success is to keep the communication open respect everyone's idea, listen to everyone and what they have to say and what they're going through in their life, be empathetic, and go ahead and work together to um, continue to inform and so that there can be a wholehearted decision based upon that calm, peaceful receiving of information. So... Um, let me know what you think about the video and just love you guys. And I'm here with you. Um, if you need anything, just, you know, hit me up, subscribe. You have my email and, um, I'm here for you. And as always, enjoy your present because it is the most amazing gift that you will ever receive and I will ever receive.